What's up guys, Eric Psychic here and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do tasks with Grizzly Adams to gain task points while you level up. Why should you bother doing tasks? The purpose of doing tasks are to gain task points which unlock different perks like the ability to sell certain creature products and access shortcuts around Port Hope which usually bring you close to popular spawns. Tasks are also good ways to earn money because the bosses of each task monster usually drop decent loot. The earlier you start tasking the better because as you get higher in level the tasks get longer and harder. So in this video I'm going to show you guys the best areas to task for the 6 to 49 level range. Now although you can start tasking fresh out of Dawnport, or even at level 6, some of these tasks will be hard if you don't have decent equipment and skills. I recommend spending a few days offline training before attempting to task if possible, and hunting easier creatures like what I talk about in my Tibia Beginner Guide. In this video, I'm using my new character's reasonably skilled Paladin and Knight with equipment no better than a plate set and skills in the low 60s. Alright, so the first task I'll go over is the Crocodile task. The main task area for Crocodiles is the Crocodile Cave of Port Hope, which is just north of the depot. There are a few entrances to this cave that require a shovel, but the center entrance is always open. You will need a rope to get out. Crocodiles are fairly easy monsters for reasonably skilled players, but speaking from experience, a mage fresh out of Dawnport will find this cave a little too difficult unless the entrance is cleared by another player for them beforehand. Knights and Paladins should be able to hunt crocodiles just fine. Beware of the crabs in this cave, their high defense makes them difficult to kill without a stronger weapon as a knight. You'll want to hunt the main floor of the crocodile cave if you're a low level, but higher levels can venture deeper down where they'll find crocodiles mixed with tortoises and blood crabs. The tortoises have high defense as well, so you'll want decent skills on a knight or a better weapon than what you start out with. The loot of crocodiles is decent. They drop a fair amount of gold, plenty of food, and even rarely some crocodile boots. Unfortunately, these boots have no purpose but aesthetics, but they do sell for 1k to NPC. If the crocodile cave of Port Hope is full, you can also find another decent crocodile spawn on Fenrock, which can be accessed from Yalahar. The crocodiles here are also mixed in with tortoises, so I wouldn't recommend hunting this spawn until around level 20 for a knight. Because of the piercing nature of a paladin's attacks and mage's spells circumventing armor totally, both vocations can probably hunt tortoises as soon as they feel comfortable running them. Tortoises are not taskable, however. After killing 300 crocodiles, report the task to Grizzly Adams and you will receive one task point and the ability to fight the crocodile boss, the Snapper. Note that you can repeat all tasks three times, so make sure you take the next crocodile task before you head out to fight the boss so you can rack up more kills on the way. The Snapper is located in the Crocodile Cave of Port Hope, right down the eastern hole. The boss is just a slightly stronger crocodile and has slightly better loot with the chance of dropping a knight armor, which is a significant body armor upgrade for knights and paladins. The next task I recommend doing is both the Mammoth and Badger tasks simultaneously. You can find these monsters roaming all over the Formigar Glacier in Svargrond. To get to the first task area, head southwest of Svargrond and up a snowy staircase. On these plains you'll find Mammoths and Badgers both running around mixed in with some Winter Wolves. Mages and Paladins probably hunt this task the best since Mammoths can hit like trucks on new players. The Badgers are basically rats so killing them shouldn't be a problem. This task can be very profitable. The Mammoths drop valuable creature products as well as various rares that sell for decent amounts to NPC. The thick fur the mammoths drop is also used in the ice protection imbuement, so its value will probably rise following the 2016 winter update. Badgers also drop acorns which are needed to access the earth portal in this year's winter update, so they should fetch a decent price on your world's market. The only thing you need to be aware of while doing this task is the sinkhole that may spawn in this icy patch toward the south side of the mountain. If you accidentally fall down this hole, you will surely die instantly to the energy monsters that lie down there. If you happen to run out of spawn, more mammoths and badgers can be found down the south side of the mountain as well as on the top of the glacier to the north. To get to the other area, just head back to the snowy stairs, head north past some penguins and look for an icy wall. Here you can either levitate up the mountain or use stackable objects like parcels. You'll find mammoths, badgers, and wyverns up top. Upon completion of the 300 badger task, you'll receive one task point, and after completing the 300 mammoth task, you'll receive three task points. You can then fight the mammoth boss, the Blood Tusk. This boss is located in the second area I just showed you over to the northwest. You can ascend the mountain from the east side like I showed you, or the northern side of the mountain as well. The Blood Tusk is another easy boss that can drop a mammoth fur cape, which is a nice body armor for paladins or knights looking for a lighter alternative to the plate armor. The next task I'll go over is the Tarantula task in Port Hope. This task is probably one of my favorites because there are many different Tarantula caves and they give good experience and loot. Tarantulas can be quite difficult for new players though, so you'll want to have decent gear and skills before attempting to take them on. This task isn't very profitable if you're a low level that takes a lot of damage, but if you did the Crocodile, Mammoth, and Badger task previously, you should have enough money saved up to hunt these monsters well. 
If tarantulas are too difficult, level a bit on the side and come back or bring a stealth ring. Tarantulas cannot see invisible players. To get a feel for tarantulas, I would head to the newer spawn that is located to the south of the Medusa Tower in the Taquanda jungle. This spawn is great for hunting tarantulas one by one. For more advanced players, you can hunt the northern or southern tarantula caves that are connected through underground tunnels. I would recommend these caves only for advanced players since the tarantulas here come in groups usually, especially around the holes you pop up. Again, if you can get one, a stealth ring would make life much easier if you put it on as you go up the hole and then clear the tarantulas out before taking it off. Tarantulas drop a decent amount of gold, eggs that sell for 80 gold to NPC, and also pieces of the plate set and rarely time rings. Each task is worth 2 points and you also get to kill the tarantula boss Hyde. Hyde, as always, is a slightly stronger tarantula that can drop a terra hood, spider silk, or night legs. You can find Hyde in the eastern cave of the northern tarantula spawn. You can access it by traveling through the western spawn and going underground, or if you don't want to walk through the tarantula spawn, you can get there by walking through the jungle and heading down the eastern hole. From this point forward, I strongly recommend being at least level 20 and having skills in the 60s or higher, or a magic level in the 20s. The next task is probably the fastest task of all and can get you some pretty sweet items. The task is killing Carnifolas, only 150 of them. There are two main spawns to hunt Carnifolas and they can also be found scattered throughout the Taquanda jungle, especially around here. The best cave is the one to the north, found here a little east of the ape city Benuda. Down in this failed laboratory is a bunch of Carnifolas as well as mutated humans. The mutated humans are very profitable but also a little difficult since they come in groups and have a wave attack. The other area is down near the Asura Palace to the far east of Port Hope. You should finish the task easily in either spawn. Carnifolas can be quite difficult for poorly geared knights, so I would recommend this task more for a major paladin. Carnifolas aren't known for their loot, but they do have a 1 in 1000 chance of dropping a carrot on a stick, which is used to tame a terror bird as a mount. After finishing the Carnifola task, you can also kill the boss Deathbind, who is located in this tiny cave to the east of Grizzly Adams. Deathbind drops a lot of valuable loot, and you have a chance of looting a mandrake or a sweet smelling bait. The Mandrake is used for the Shaman outfit, and the Sweet Smelling Bait is used to tame a Wailing Widow mount. The task also rewards you with 3 task points, despite it being short and easy, so definitely make sure to do this task before hitting level 50. This next task is also located in Port Hope, and involves killing a combination of 300 Congras, Sabangs, or Merlkins. You can find these apes on the top of Port Hope's jungle in an area known as Benuda. It's easy to get swarmed here in Benuda if you're by yourself and just entering the spawn, so be careful and work your way in slowly from the edges. Knights and Paladins can hunt here, but I would recommend having decent equipment and skills. The best vocation to hunt here is a mage, especially if you're hunting with avalanches. Apes don't drop a lot of loot, but they do have a few rare drops that are quite valuable. Ape fur is one drop that has around a 1 in 100 chance from any ape and is used for 3 different outfits. The other drop you'll want to look out for is a banana staff. These are extremely rare with a 1 in 1000 drop chance from a Merlekin and they are used for the shaman outfit. On my world, I've seen these staffs go for 50k, and on other worlds, I'm sure they're even more valuable. You can make some really good money hunting these apes, but you need the rare drops to do so. Besides the surface, you can also go deeper underground and find large rooms of apes. I hunted these rooms with avalanches on my 49 sorcerer and finished the task in 13 minutes. Definitely do this task if you're a mage. After killing 300 apes, you'll be rewarded with 2 task points. Alright, so these next three tasks can be done simultaneously or by themselves. In fact, you can do the tarantula task in the spawn too. The tasks are 200 stone golems for 3 points apiece, 200 gargoyles for 2 points apiece, and 300 thornback tortoises for 2 points apiece. I highly recommend taking all three of these tasks at the same time because you can find all three monsters in the Mariana Gargoyle Cave. Mariana only requires a short access quest to get there and has many floors filled with these monsters which are all quite easy. None of these tasks have a boss so they are done just for the points. Stone golems drop iron ore which can be valuable depending on your server as well as sulfurous stones quite often that are worth 100 gold to NPC. Gargoyles have similar loot and also drop their stone wings which are worth 120 gold. The thornback tortoises also have an item worth 100 gold which is their thorn. So each monster here has a decent creature product you can sell for money. Again, a mage with GFBs can do these tasks the fastest hunting this cave, but knights and paladins can easily hunt here too. If you can't hunt the spawn or you've already finished one or more of these tasks and want to hunt these monsters separately, here are some other alternatives. For stone golems, you can hunt these mixed with a few gargoyles and a cave and farm mine. Stone golems are pretty difficult for low level knights, so you may need to be around 30 before hunting these. Gargoyles are fairly easy, but still have a high defense. Mages and paladins hunt these monsters best. Gargoyles can also be found in abundance in the upper spike, which makes them a good task to do if you're hunting there with GFB. 
Another gargoyle and stone golem spawn can be found in a cave in Svargron near the barbarian camps, down a ramp on the west side of the mammoth spawn I showed you previously. Finally, thornback tortoises can be found on the Laguna Islands. You'll need to continue on in the Mariana quest to get access, but if you do, you'll find a ton of tortoises and thornback tortoises there. This spawn is great for knights with decent skills and is probably pretty empty on most worlds nowadays. The last task I recommend for you to do is the Terramite task. Terramites are great to hunt on knights, but again my knight was too weak to hunt them so I tried them on my paladin. You should probably hunt Terramites with a shield and royal spears if you're level 25 or higher because they hit quite hard if you don't have a shield on. I would wait until at least level 30 to hunt them on a knight. Terramites can be found in a cave that connects Port Hope and Ankerman, a cave in the southwest corner of Darashia, and in a cave on the Zhao Steppe. Terramites drop a decent amount of gold and a lot of valuable creature products, one of which is food, their eggs. Make sure you don't eat them because you can sell them to NPC. 300 Terramites gets you two task points. There's only one task left that I didn't cover and that is the Gnarlhound task. The reason I don't recommend doing this task is because you will definitely hit level 50 before completing all of the other tasks and Gnarlhounds are just terrible experience and loot. If you must task them for whatever reason, like your server being overcrowded or something, then you can find Gnarlhounds in a cave also on the Zhao Steppe near the Terramites. 300 Gnarlhounds gets you 2 task points. Alright guys, that's it for the 6-49 to 49 range of the Grizzly Adams tasks. Hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on what tasks to do and where to do them if you didn't know all the spots before. I hope to continue this video with tasks for the other level ranges too in the future. Like I said earlier, tasking is a great way to knock out some points as a low level while making profit. Believe me when I say you want to get your 100 task points done as early as possible. You don't want to end up like me on my paladin stuck hunting deep or Benuda for the next 75 task points. Alright guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.